God calls you to a vehicle, sports, speaking, podcasting, writing, sales, technology, engineering, he calls you to a vehicle. You've got to maintain that vehicle. You've got to do the oil checks. You've got to do the tire rotations. You've got to check under the hood. You've got to make sure everything's good to go. Do the prep work. But when it's time to drive, because you've done that prep work, what's the prep work? It's your practicing. It's your training. It's your praying. It's your praying. It's your research. It's your YouTube video binge watching. The spirit can drive and y'all can go somewhere and you can sit in the passenger seat knowing that like, all right, I'll go wherever you take me. But it's because you did the prep work and you know the car's good to go, but the spirit's driving. And the car is on loan from God. Thursday. It's not Thursday right now. It's Wednesday right now. Um, but I know this is coming at you on a Thursday. It's been a funny week. It's been a crazy week. I um I wasn't even sure if I was gonna get on here and do this right now, but I did have like an opening in my schedule and I was like, well, I could sit here and scroll on Instagram, or I could sit here and talk to a computer that will go out to YouTube one day and maybe hopefully be a value to somebody. All that to say, this week was funny because yesterday I got, um, I told you guys I'd been preparing for a speech and it was for my high school. So I was able to go and talk at their founder's chapel, which if you follow me on social media, you've seen it, but it's, it's really cool. Like it's basically, they bring back people from all these years to come and visit Love It. And they bring back people to, um, to just kind of be a part. And they go through the history of my high school. And it's it was really like, it was a cool thing. And I was so doggone honored to be uh, the guest speaker. I found out a couple months ago. And anyways, I was just so tickled. I was like, I mean, I can, I can do it. I can go up there. But uh, do you have anybody else? Are you sure? Are you sure? Um, but I really was. I was so honored and excited to be with that crowd. And this is such a God thing. Like I didn't even really realize this until now, but this weekend I was with my middle school girls. So through Buckhead church in Atlanta, I work with middle schoolers and I was with like that generation. Right. So I was, it's called transit weekend. It's like you stay at a host home and then you go to this conference with like 3000 people there and it's all middle schoolers. And I was so, um, convicted is the word like well, not convicted i was so taken aback by the light in this upcoming generation like man i don't think these dudes and guy, gals get enough credit i don't i think that there's so much more concern being talked about for this upcoming generation than there is excitement and I am just here to tell you as a messenger from someone who I feel like I've been around a lot of these kids a lot the past couple of days, um, there is so much light that they are carrying. So much light. I am so encouraged. Like there are so many young people. I mean, 3,000 of them on a Saturday night were raising their hands, posturing their hearts towards Jesus. I was just completely taken aback. I was like, wow, these guys are and girls are so much more mature in their faith than I ever was as a sixth grader, as a seventh grader, as an eighth grader. I mean, I was standing there and there was this, this call to like give your life to Christ. And there was a group of about 20 sixth grade girls sobbing. And I was like, I didn't, I was no, like, I didn't know Jesus that well in sixth grade. And it to me was so encouraging. And even like, this um like yesterday i spoke at my high school and and granted there it was like a high school and then also middle school and also elementary school so there was all grades represented k through 12. but afterwards when i got some messages on instagram i went and saw their profiles all the stuff these guys and gals had 
Bible verses all up in their bio. And I'm just like, you know, and I'm not saying that's the the marking of a Christian, like it's the fruit of your life, not necessarily the bio on your Instagram, but at least we know we have kids that know scripture and know parts of scripture. I mean, to me, that's so encouraging because again, I think the only thing we hear nowadays is social media is ruining your life. And, you know, I am just so encouraged by this upcoming generation and I see so much light in this upcoming generation. And I am so motivated by this upcoming generation. They make me better and they excite me. I just see them as these light carriers and I don't think we give them enough credit. Anyways, all that to say yesterday was, um, was such a fun day because I was able to go and talk to them. And, and you know, what's cool about speaking in person, I haven't been able to really do an engagement like that in a year or so. Um, and so for me, like, what I love about experiences like that is I get to see people in their face with podcasting. Like with this right now, I see my face, which I mean, I look at my face all the time. Like I see my face all the time. You know what I mean? Like when I look in the mirror and all this stuff, like I don't get to see the faces of you all listening. And so speaking in places for me is so fun because I actually get to see your face and To me, that's such a trigger point, like a prayer of mine before I speak is, God, I can see their face, but I can't see their heart. Only you can see their heart. So help me see their face and let that be a reminder that I am limited in my capacity and you've got to come through to help the seed of whatever I'm saying from you go to their heart. Because again, I can't see their heart, only you can. And so to me, like, I love that. Um reminder. And so I love being with you guys. All that to say, today, we're talking about preparation and surrender. So actually, yesterday, um, I was telling a friend of mine who came, I was like, you know, I, I did prepare a lot for this. And I always, I prepare a lot for speeches. Like I prepare months in advance. And how I prepare is I repeat it to myself. I know I've heard um, like Sadie Robertson talk about before how she will record her speech on her phone and she'll just listen to it. For me, if I'm, if I'm giving a message, I like to literally rehearse it, so to speak. Like I, I practice it. I practice it and I practice a lot. Like I practice like, like three months in advance, sometimes like two times a day for three months. Right. So I like to have it written out well in advance. All that to say this person made the comment of you crush that. Like, obviously your, your practice wore off. And to me, it was so funny. Cause I was like, Oh honey, if you think that was me up there, you're joking yourself. Because I think what we do is sometimes we associate like practicing something as being the thing that gets you through but there is this element of surrender involved too. And what I mean by that is there's a difference between practicing and performing. Practicing will get you skill. It will make you smooth, but performing requires an element of surrender because you can practice as many times as you want, but you only get to perform it once. And that's where faith comes in. And I was saying like, Oh, you have no idea because literally minutes before the, um, the, the talk, I was in the bathroom, like praying to God, God, I'm freaking out. I feel like I completely forgot everything I want to say. I don't take notes up there with me. I just take my Bible. So literally my message is on my heart. That's it. And, um, and I was like, I I feel like I forgot all my pointers. Like I, you're gonna, I don't want to go up there alone. Like you're going to have to do this for me. And it kind of, when they, when they made that comment, it made me feel like, wait a second, am I just really good at rehearsing? Or am I actually called to this? Am I actually gifted at this? And I think we all feel that way sometimes. Like, wait a second, am I am I actually called to this thing? Am I actually gifted with this thing? Or am I just really skilled? And I'm like, wait a second, wait a second. First of all, then this is what I came to. First of all, I think it's crazy. Like we 
all of us, you meet anybody on this earth, it's crazy. You ask what they're interested in. To me, like the fact that I'm interested in speaking and I feel called to it, the fact I'm interested in podcasting, the fact I'm interested in podcasting on scripture and this subject, it's so bizarre out of all the things in this world Annie Mayfield could be interested in. For some reason, I'm interested in this, talking, speaking, writing, sales, sailing technology. Like those are very niche subjects. For some reason, out of all the things in this world, you are interested in teaching fourth graders. You are interested in running. You are interested in engineering. Like think of all the things in this world you could be interested in. You're interested in those things. And so to me, like what we're called to do, again, calling different from purpose. Purpose is the same for all of us, is to be in relationship with our Heavenly Father. And from that comes the clarity of what's my calling, which changes depending on the season you're in. We've talked about that before. But to me, the fact that you're curious about it, like, I'm like, what do you YouTube when you, no one would have to pay you? Like, you just, you're interested in that. That's a calling. Because it's like, that's your evidence. Think of all the things you could be interested in. The fact that God postured your heart towards that certain thing, that's your evidence. That's your thing. Like, I have no interest in being a lawyer. I have no interest in botany or birds or cremation. And I have no idea why cremation just came to my mind. But I have no interest in those things at all. But some of you might. Some of you might. That's crazy. Think of all the things you could be interested in in the world. And you're interested in cremation. Which, no, hey, like, that's awesome. There's a lot of people that, I mean, there's people that need to do that job. Respect. For some reason, like, you're interested in a certain category. To me, that's your evidence that that's your calling. Because why on earth did... Is your heart called towards that? What started that? You know what I mean? It's like when you're, if you presented me with a set of scientific facts on how the brain works, I'm really not going to be that interested. But you present the same facts to someone else and they're incredibly interested and they want to be a doctor one day. To me, that's, that's calling. Like that's God nudging you to something. So that's my first point is if you're questioning whether or not you're called to something, it's like the fact that you're curious about something that you have a heart inclined towards that thing is pretty good evidence that that's your thing because most people don't. Most people will never. You're special in that regard. Like God wired you that way. Jeremiah, before he formed you, he knew you. He knew you before he formed you. Before you were born, he set you apart. He knew the inner workings of your heart before you did. He knew that your heart was going to be curious about that thing before you even did. That's how he knew. Second thing, let's talk about preparation. When they asked me like, how do you know if you are really called to that thing or if you're just really good at practicing? I was like, well, that was a good question. And I had to think and pray about it a lot because it made me wrestle with this myself. And then I was like, wait, 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 wait a second. Everything I do is by the grace of God. I wouldn't even be able to practice if it wasn't for the grace of God. And I know that because I had strep throat about three weeks ago. And I know that there are people in the hospital right now that have been struggling for months, months with various diseases, infections, whatever have you. When I had strep throat, I couldn't speak. I literally couldn't speak. If I had a situation where I was like that for months on end, I couldn't have practiced. Like my practice was by the grace of God. And the thing that I wanted to practice for and that I was asked to practice for was an indication of the thing he called me to because my heart was inclined towards that thing. And when my heart was inclined towards that thing, I had the option to wing it or to practice and prepare. And I think sometimes we confuse like letting the spirit guide us as winging it. Like I know a lot of speakers that are like this. They're like, I just like to speak from the heart. And I'm like, yeah, I, I challenge you on that because to me, speaking from the heart is being so well prepared. And John Maxwell says this in his 16 undeniable laws of effective communication. Speaking from the heart is being so aware of your message and being so prepared that literally your message is your heart. It's not what you say. It's the energy that you embody as you say it. 
And you can't get to that point if you haven't practiced, if you haven't prepared. So being well prepared is not a deviance from speaking with the spirit light gu guiding. In fact, it's the opposite. You must be prepared before you can reach the place where it is truly your spirit speaking and your heart speaking. A lot of us speak from up here. We speak from our minds. And I think that's where we get, we get, um, we get in trouble. And I'll apply this to any other calling that you prefer, but let's just go this speaking route for a second. There's people that, that wing it, right? Like they speak from um, the heart. I'm not using quotations. That's what they think they're doing. When really they're just going up there and seeing what comes to mind. Or they're going off of a gut feeling. But the problem with that is you're making it about you. It's your gut feeling. When you prepare, you have to, the best people are the ones that put themselves in the feet of the audience. It's like, it's not about you. It's about what the audience needs. And so when you just wing it, you're going off of your own gut feeling of what you, what you think that they need instead of what you've prepared to know that they need. The second thing is when we talk from our minds. This is when I think people, they've prepared the content, but they haven't actually gotten it into their heart. It's like they're not living out the message that they're saying. And so when they go to speak, they typically read from a piece of paper or they like it's just it's coming from their head, not their heart. And the place where I think it's the differentiation between are you just really good at that thing or is it actually your calling is like you combine the fact that it's your spirit guiding, but you've done the preparation in advance. Like you've set the stones in advance. You've thought about the audience. You've thought about what they need. You put yourself in the shoes. You've prepared the message. You've prepared the message so well, it is literally written on your heart. Not that it's memorized and you don't need notes. It's more so that it's like a song that you know the words to, but more than knowing the words to the song, it's like you know the melody of the music in your soul. You can literally like dance to your speech because it's written on your heart. It's not just like say, like if I just said to you the words of, um, what's a song that makes me cry? Move Your Heart by Maverick City Music. That song always makes me cry. If I just said like, I just want to move your heart. That's all I want to do. I just want to stand in awe and pour my love on you. Like, that's how a lot of speakers talk. It's like they know the words, but there's no heart in it. There's a maturity past knowing the words. And that is your heart is in it. That song is in your heart. Your speech is a song in your heart. And you apply this to all callings. Maybe you're a soccer player. It's like there's a point where you've practiced so much. Your sport is not just something you do. It's who you are. You get like Taylor Swift. People were saying like, man, Taylor Swift was on a world tour and just is about to launch a new album and I can barely fold my laundry and listen to a podcast at the same time. And I'm like, no, the thing is Taylor Swift, the reason she can do that is because music isn't just something she does. It's who she is. She can't help it. Like for me with writing, it's like, yeah, I work a full-time corporate gig and I speak and I do this podcast, but writing to me, it's who I am. Like I, I can't help it. I will absolutely make time for it because it just, it, it, it's who I am. It comes out of me. And that's the maturity when you get to that point where you've realized preparation and letting the spirit lead you and whatever it is you're called to, they're not adversaries. They're not adversaries at all. One is a prerequisite for the other. And I was thinking about this in, um, in Corinthians, it talks about um, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 9 and 10. My grace is sufficient for you, my, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness so that Christ's power may rest on me. You don't know what your weaknesses are until you've prepared a hell of a lot. That was an interesting way of saying that. A hell of a lot. Um, this this speech i prepared a lot when i started rehearsing it in front of a trusted group of people that's when it became a lot more apparent to me what my weaknesses were when i started really getting granular on where my weaknesses are like i knew every single time it was like this one part tripped me up i couldn't help it um i knew that i typically like 
stuttered at this point. And that's where when I actually gave it and I didn't stutter at that point, that was the spirit. I knew that was because in my weakness, he's made strong. You don't know where your weaknesses are until you've prepared a lot. And when you don't know where your weaknesses are, you can't identify where God's strength comes in. I knew I was going to be nervous before I went up there. I knew that. I knew that was, I mean, I wouldn't say that I don't quantify weak nervousness as a weakness necessarily, but like I, I knew that was going to happen. And so I knew when I went up there and I was nervous, but then right when I got up there and started and I wasn't nervous anymore, that was the spirit. How did I know that? Because I prepared and I practiced and I went through that experience. And so when I didn't experience that, I was able to identify God's strength. When you don't prepare, you have no idea where your weaknesses are. So you can't identify where God's strength is coming in. Again, you know you're called to something. I think we just live in this world where we think you're called to something if you're just naturally really good at it. And yes, there's a component of giftedness, but there's also a component of making sure that you steward that gift in the right way. I don't mean to throw, okay, I'm not going to say who this particularly is because I don't want to throw anyone under the bus, but I have a, a relative who is very naturally good at sports and he, um, okay, I only have one brother, so I don't think he listens to this podcast, so I think we're good. I love my brother. He's amazing. He's like one of my favorite people in the world. This kid is so freaking naturally gifted at lacrosse. It's absurd. He's such a natural athlete. It kind of made me mad because I wasn't a natural athlete growing up. I had to work really hard. Um, and that's another point I'll make in a second, but he's naturally good, but he doesn't work at it. He doesn't work at it historically. He would, she's the kid that, you know, it's so annoying because they show up and they're, they're really good. And they like ate a burger six seconds before the game. James was gifted with athleticism. But he didn't, he's not stewarding it very well. Now, he's stewarding another, a lot of the other amazing things in his life very well. But with, with lacrosse, like with sports, he didn't steward that well. So he was a good lacrosse grader, player, but is he going to be great? Is he going to be a professional? No, because he didn't work at it. You can be gifted, but you've got to steward that the right way. You've got to work that the right way. I'm trying to think of, like, Let's look at ministries, right? Like Peter, um, Paul, they were gifted with, they were called to preach, but they still, they had to work at it. They had to prepare. They had to go places and think about strategy. It's not like God was just said, you're called to spread my word and God just gave them people to talk to. Like they had to go out and seek out and work at it. In tennis, the flip side is true too. For me, I was naturally athletic, but not like, I wouldn't say I was gifted at tennis, but I worked really freaking hard. All that to say, I worked really hard and I still barely made the cut for a small D1 school. Like the, the gifting just wasn't there. Like I was athletic, don't get me wrong, but I wasn't like gifted. Even if I worked my butt off, I would never be pro because I didn't have that gift. So my point is, it's both. Like, you've got to let the spirit drive and guide you and lead, but you've also got to prepare. That's what makes you great at things. And that's where you really can identify what God called you towards because it's like, what are you willing to, to do the work for? It's a great litmus test. If you're not willing to work hard for something, that's probably not the thing you're really called to. Because when we're called to something, it keeps bothering us. We keep being curious about it. It's like we can't even help it. Again, it's who we are, not just what we do. It's a different level of maturity. So all that said, I'm very passionate about um, when people say like, oh, you're so gifted to me when I speak. I'm like, I, I received that. I also prepared. When people say, oh, you prepared a lot. That's why you did well. I go, I received that, but I also am gifted. It's both. And to be great, it's both. And it's scary because there's this component of, okay, God, like, and I remember I was terrified. I said this right before I went up on that podium. I was like, I prepared, but I also know this is yours. So if I get up there and in a split second, you're like, we're changing it. You got to say this instead. I surrender that. I will do that. 
give me the strength to do that because that's scary. And that's part of the reason why I get nervous before I go on stage is because I know I prepared, but the surrender is more important than the preparation. You prepare and you prepare and you prepare so that you can surrender. When you're not really prepared, you're, you feel it and you don't let yourself surrender to saying things the spirit guides you to because you're so focused on it just being good and you're not looking like a fool. Truth. So you prepare so that your message is on your heart so much so that you can identify you're more sensitive to, okay, what else is their spirit? I've done my preparation. I've prayed. I feel like I know what they need. But now that I'm here and I'm looking at their faces, what else is there that you need for me? And because that message is on my heart so much, I have the foundation built to where I can go off script and say that stuff and not miss a beat. Because again, my message is who I am, not what I do or what I've rehearsed. But practicing got me to that point. Prayer got me to that point. It's both. It's both for anything that you do. Whether you're an athlete or a musician, you know, like if you don't know the chords really well to a, an instrument, you don't get to that place where you could just get lost in the flow of the music and forget what your hands are doing and let your spirit guide you. Cause you don't even know the basics. It's the same with anything else. You've got to know the basics. You've got to hone in on the basics. And that curiosity and motivation comes from God calling you to something. But then once you get that, you've got to know the basics, do the work, do the practice, do the prep. And then you reach the point where you're like, okay, God, like I, I know where I'm supposed to go enough to the point where spirit like lead me. I put the wheels on the car. So now, spirit, you can drive and we can go somewhere. God, oh, I like that analogy. Let's build that out a little bit. God calls you to a vehicle, but you got to put the, you got to put the tires on. Got to do the work. You got to do the oil checks. I'm horrible at oil checks. Poor Maeve out there, my car. She like never gets her oil checked. Um, which side note, actually, I need to do that today. Um, but you, you get your oil checked. You take care of the vehicle, but the spirit's in the driver's seat. You're just a passenger. I'm going to say that again because I really like that analogy. God calls you to a vehicle, sports, speaking, podcasting, writing, sales, technology, engineering. He calls you to a vehicle. You've got to maintain that vehicle. You've got to do the oil checks. You've got to do the tire rotations. You've got to check under the hood. You got to make sure everything's good to go. Do the prep work. But when it's time to drive, because you've done that prep work, what's the prep work? It's your practicing. It's your training. It's your praying. It's your praying. It's your research. It's your YouTube video binge watching. The spirit can drive and y'all can go somewhere. And you can sit in the passenger seat knowing that like, all right, I'll go wherever you take me. But it's because you did the prep work and you know the car's good to go, but the spirit's driving. And the car is on loan from God. I really like that analogy. I'm very proud of that. Car's on loan from God. God calls you to a car. That's your vehicle of transportation. That's your calling. You got to do the prep work, check the engine, tire rotations, all the stuff. Then you sit in the passenger seat and you can relax because the spirit's got you and it's going to drive you. I love you guys. Um, I'm literally about to go call the tire place. Maybe, maybe later. Prepare and surrender. Whatever the thing is you're curious about, God called you that. And your evidence for that is think of all the bajillion other things you could be interested in, but you have no interest in. You're interested in that thing, that place, that person, that time, that job opportunity. Love you guys. And I hope that this blessed you and encouraged you, reminded you that God gave you a unique light and it is your job to shine it in this world because we need you to. That being said, if you were blessed by this message and you can think of anybody else that also needs this type of encouragement, do me a favor, hit like, hit subscribe, 
leave me a comment. Uh, it helps me out a lot and helps this message that I do believe God gave my heart to share with the world gets out. I hope you have such an amazing rest of your day.